I did. He was on the powder wagon, but jumped off just before she blew. Come on, let's ride. The one man who could have told us who's holding Larry Monroe prisoner. And he's through talking. Forever. You still figure Purvis is one of the men holding Larry? No doubt of it. If his gang is so strong, what did he run away for? My guess is they drove him out to keep him from getting panicked and talking. Well, what's our next move, if any? Mike, you and Dude ride to the ranch and get the deed to Larry's mining claim from Lucy. What for? I think it's best to leave it with the sheriff for safekeeping. We're going in and make a search of Purvis's office. It's a 10 to 1 bet he left something that will set us on the right track. Then we see you in town, yes? Right. Better take Purvis back with us. Miss Elsie, Mark Caldwell come pretty fast. See what he wants, Jan. Keep your trap shut. Where's Miss Lucy? I said, where is she? A note and talk. And keep the trap shut at the same time. Oh, smart China boy, huh? Well, I'll... Get that gun, cowboy. Pick it up, Chan. Hold it, Chan. And you, miss, drop your gun. What do you men want? Get in that closet. Do as you're told and you won't get hurt. You too, get in there. Keep your eye peeled for the circle deep punchers. Right. I'll search his desk. What does he want? Tell me, fellas. Hello. What's this? Grant to all the land in Apache Gulch. Hmm. Mineral rocks. That's what we came for. Come on, let's get out. That's Larry's mining grant they've stolen. Killer. 
right out, Steve, and write her on Monroe until you hear from me. Boys, looks like we get Monroe's platinum deposit whether he talks or not. Oh, yeah? How come? Well, Steve just brought me the government grant of the land it's on. I don't see what good that'll do us. Monroe owns the land and it must be recorded somewhere. Sure. Now we'll produce papers to show that Monroe sold it to Purvis and Purvis sold it to us. How are you going to do that? Purvis left town. <laughs> Probably dead by now. Oh, so what's the better? Now he won't be able to deny the sale. You'll find some letters of Monroe's over in Purvis's office. I want a copy of his signature on this paper right here. When I get it, maybe you can guess what I'll write above it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, leave it to me. While you were making a report to the sheriff about Purvis, I'm going to take a look through that SA office. All right, Jim must mean a lot to you. Kentucky Wayne. Give me that. I said give it to me. Larry Monroe's signature. And you were tracing it. I'm taking you to the sheriff. That suits me. taking you down to see the sheriff. Now, if you'll just sign these two reports, I reckon that'll wind up the Purvis case. Being both the coroner and the sheriff, you're gonna meet yourself coming back one of these days. <laughs> Howdy, Kentuck. What's been going on here? I didn't know you two men knew each other. We just got acquainted, Sheriff, over in Purvis's office. What's this all about, Tobe? Search me. Before Purvis left town, he asked me to straighten out his papers. I was doing that. And this fellow came in and drew a gun on him. That isn't so, Sheriff. When I found him, he was... Working on Purvis's papers, just like I said. When this fellow jumped me, naturally, I tangled with him. I reckon you acted sort of hasty, Kentuck. Driscoll's our biggest rancher and one of our leading citizens. Looks to me like you owe him an apology. I don't want any apology. But you'll find it a lot healthier if you quit meddling with things that ain't any of your business. Some of these upright citizens sure pop up in funny places. That's strange. Driscoll's coming from the sheriff's office. I thought he was over at Purvis's. Isn't that Kentucky Wade's horse in front of the jail? I didn't know he was in town. You don't suppose he could have... Things are sure in a mess now. Yeah, it looks that way. What happened to you? Kentucky Wade caught me red-handed in Purvis's office. I bluffed my way through in front of the sheriff, but I didn't fool Wade any. Doc, looks like Wade's got to be taken out of circulation. You remember the Pawnee kid? Yeah. Well, the boys that wound him up are over in the Silver Dollar right now. Good idea. 
I'll see that Kentucky's where you want it. And you're ready. You better put a saddle blanket on that, huh? <laughs> I tip my hat back, I'll be ready. Right. Hello, Kentucky. Well, well. I've been wanting to see you. Didn't know you were in town. Won't you and Trigger join me at the Silver Dollar? That's mighty kind of you, Mr. Keeler. We hadn't figured on stopping, but I don't guess it'll do any harm, eh, Trigg? Just what I was figuring. Come along. Better get with it. Need some blank cartridges. I brought some. Anything new in the Larry Monroe case? Not a thing, Mr. Keeler. That's disappointing. I'd hoped that my offer of a reward would bring results. Sometimes I feel that my long fight for law and order and brimstone is hopeless. Excuse me a minute. Sure right thing. Bill Saunders, I told you we'd meet up again, and when I did, I'd be healed. Now, Rod! Right. Stop those hombres! Back up, you. You trigger. Drop that gun. Better do what he says, Trigger. just killed a man. Yes, but it was justifiable homicide. Judge Lawrence, you mean you saw it? Yes, Sheriff, I did. This man was up on the balcony there aiming to shoot Kentucky Wade in the back when Kentucky's friend here shot him. I've seen a lot of rattlesnakes plugged in my time, but never one so dead center. Reckon that clears you, Trigger. Thanks, Judge. Go right ahead, boys. Here's your other gun, mister. Some of you fellas lend me a hand. How did you spot that fellow on the balcony, Trigger? You got eyes in the back of your head? No. I was in Dodge City when that same outfit shot down the Pawnee Kid. Oh, you recognize him, huh? Not till they started their gunplay. I knew from the sound they were shooting blanks. That meant it was a fake fight to cover up a killing. So I looked for the killer and found him. It's a mighty good thing for me, Trigger, and I won't forget it. Shucks. I don't like to see nobody shot in the back. Come on, let's ride. Thomas. Kentucky, the D 
deed you sent us to get has been stolen. Stolen? Figuro! When did that happen? Just before Mike and Dude got to the ranch. That explains what Driscoll was doing at Purvis's office. Told Driscoll? Yeah, I caught him tracing Larry's signature. I never suspected he had anything to do with Larry's disappearance. What you tell me now makes me wonder about a lot of things. But what do you mean, Lucy? We know they were holding Larry prisoner near Apache Falls. Apache Falls is on Tobe Driscoll's ranch. I never was satisfied with that layout. Let's give it another look. Well, what about Lucy? Lucy's going right with you. Those friends of Larry Monroe just rode up, and they're searching the shack. Let them search. They won't find anything. Yeah, but what if they come in here? They're bound to find Monroe. Keep your eye on them. And if they do find the cave, we'll give them something they're not looking for. I'll just fix you so you can't squawk. I don't see any place around here where they could be holding Larry. Let's give our horses some water and see what's over the ridge. What is it, Kentucky? Looks like somebody just got a pail of water from here. And someone must live in that shack we saw over there. I wonder. Say, that looks like a cave behind the waterfall. It is a cave. Come on. In here, boys, quick. Get open by that door. Watch up, Steve. Kentucky Wade and his bunch are outside. The minute that door starts to open, let them have it. Baldy, you and me will take one around the back way. He's gone. 